Yeah. Yeah, sir. Hey, man. Welcome back to the channel. We have just finished watching Jujutsu Kaisen Season 2. You know what I'm saying? Episode 40 of Jujutsu Kaisen. You know what I'm saying? Thunderclap. And Man. first things first, let me just start off by saying, before we even, you know, we usually give our little recap, our little review, and then we give a rating of the episode. I'm going to just get a rating right now, nigga, that's a 10. Yeah, like, no cap, that's probably the best episode I've seen of JJK, like, at least in a long-ass time. In a long-ass time. Like, wow. I, by default, I know where to begin, like... Fucking hell is what we all want to see and talk about, but Toji put in real fucking work, too. That was probably the most disrespectful fight scene of the year. And cleanest at the same time, too. Like That nigga one hand. Psh, 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 psh. That shit was like, wicked. Oh. He started peeking the fucking rabbits in the air with Bro, rocks. He stomped on the ground, broke that bitch. And started poking the little pieces of debris and killing the rabbits. Yeah. Before the shit he threw up in the air went back into his hand. He killed all the right. rabbits. I, I was under the impression he just chose Megami because he recognized them. He had that whole ordeal at the end and then knocked himself. So it really makes me think, like, did he just deadass choose to spank this nigga, like, by coincidence? That's what I'm saying. Because it's like they were... They did say he was going after the strongest one. And out of that group that was there, like, I would assume that either Nanami or the old nigga was the strongest. Now, I understand why not fight the old nigga. He had one arm at the end of the day. But Nanami was still there. And him and Megami were both drained at the time. So it's like, I would assume out of the three of them that were left with Maki in there, he would choose Nanami. Yeah, like, instead he literally made lottery pick and started really mixtaping that nigga. You already said it. It was probably the most disrespectful fight of the year. Honestly, that's also, like, I don't want to call it the cleanest because at least cleanest animation sequence. I don't want to just straight up call it that because, I mean, we also saw the other half of this episode, but... It really felt like you're watching that shit. Yeah. Like, everything, bro, it was like, he got disrespectful, blocking shit with one hand, pieced them up, then started piecing up the rabbits, then stomped the floor, and, oh, it was like, all fluid. That whole scene was like, so fluid through the whole thing. It was like, there was no break. Yeah. Just straight up ass whooping. And, that ass whooping carried over to the other half of the episode. Big sunken up. Oh, man. Now, I'm not going to lie. Joko showed out. And it, it it really, it really like, hearing Sunkana himself give him flowers, like, that really says a lot. Yeah, yeah. You, you know, he really did show out, too. Like, I kind of jokingly said it, but I kind of really fucking mean it at the same time. Where was this when he got his head ripped off by Gojo? I mean, I guess, to be fair... He never got the chance just because he got his domain, like, overtaken off rip. But, I mean, even still, I didn't think Gojo was that strong, if I'm being honest. Like, even though he technically never even touched that nigga, at the same time, that's sunk him. He's not supposed to. For him to show out like that was actually really amazing. Yeah, it's like when he fought Gojo, like, he didn't even use not even close to the shit that he just used right here. Now, you could say, like... After that complete and utter ass whooping he took in season one, that he tried to get stronger. So yeah, maybe probably, yeah. like that, I would assume that was it. But that's a drastic difference right there. <laughs> like he did get his shit drastically disrespected the first time. So I guess I could that I see him making that kind of drastic jump. But even still, like that's a really big difference. And another thing too. It makes sense. I'm not off rip. I'm not that mad that Toji offed himself like that because it makes sense that if he by default recognized him, he would because he literally said I'm glad then did it. It makes sense when you look at it like that. Mm -hmm. My thing is, I low key wanted to see something of versus yeah, Toji. Yeah, I, I, I wanted to thing, see. It. 
Especially they're saying he could keep up with him speed wise. So the thing with that too, he said he's on par with Sunkuna's speed at that time. Meaning okay. when he fought him in season one. That was like as soon as Sunkuna ate like I think it was the third finger or the fourth finger or some shit like that. That was only four fingers. Yeah. Jogo gave that nigga ten more. Yeah. So see, I think Sukuna now is faster than is a lot faster than that. I'm sure he is, but at the same time, I'm feeling like Toji is near that. Like we're really starting to get the heavy hitters in the Shibuya arc, or at least a load of them. And I'm feeling like Toji right now is not too far. Like I feel like he's in that Loki still. He's in the realm of Sunkana and Gojo. Like, I don't think he's close, but I think he would probably give them both a mid-diff, which, I mean, everyone else is getting damn near no diff. Yeah, yeah, I can, I can see that, 100%. And I'm very That's curious good. about, uh, not to cut you off, but I'm very curious about the girl that pulled up on uh, Sunkana at the end. Because yeah. Sunkana himself was happy to see her. That is not a good sign for everyone who's left. Yeah, it's not. It's not. Like, especially just because this nigga sunken up. I was kind of under the impression maybe he would just help everyone. It really looks like he's uncontrollable. And that person who pulled up is kind of a low-key safe bet. I'm feeling like like we're in the dark, but I feel like she's literally a third party. Mm -hmm. So... If that's dead ass the case, that's a problem. A major problem for both sides. And then it also begs the question, like, what happens from here, like, let's say after the Shibuya arc? Or even going forward in the Shibuya arc, because it's not over yet. Like, Sunkana and Shorty that just pulled up, them two alone is unbelievable smoke for everyone who's left. And they're... Oh, like working solo like they're not allied with anybody that's a problem for both sides mm -hmm. like low-key i'm thinking you, you might want to free that nigga gojo like even just before that oh something also that i thought was really amazing just funny as shit this nigga pulled up in between two different parties and said i command everyone to stay still basically let's see who has the biggest balls game Literally, it's like, he said, no one's allowed to move until I say now. And, of course, if you move before then, I'll kill you. While a like, fucking meteor is coming down on them. He said, like, not yet. Not yet, nigga. That shit was right there, nigga. They moved, like, like, a millisecond right before his hands clapped, bro. They said, fuck that, nigga. Like, like it really goes to show you, like, what Gojo would be on if he actually was a villain. Like, it's clear that he's getting the same treatment and respect. I would say more, but at the end of the day, Gojo's on the good side. So it's like, you could say all the curses be treating Gojo. Eh, I don't know, because they're not even, like, niggas just know better not to fuck with that nigga sunk enough. It might be a personality thing rather than a power scaling thing, but... People still try Gojo, even if they're terrified. Yeah, Sunkana. Yeah, I think it is a personality thing, cause like that nigga will just kill you just cause. Like he, they. I think Jogo said it like an episode ago, where he was like, "This is the purest form of evil." Yeah. Like I'm not fucking with that nigga, bro. <laughs> like, I'm shit. like Gojo, he's he's more of a laid back dude for the most part, but he'll still get on your ass. It's like trying to troll either Goku or Vegeta. Yeah. Like, they'll both get on your ass, but one's going to deadass bully you while the other is probably just going to toy with you. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. You know, this was a really fire episode. And I don't mean to keep banging on the Gojo drum, but it's like I genuinely don't understand what anyone has for this nigga Sunkana until, like, unless Yuji somehow gets control back, it's looking like someone's going to have to find a way to free Gojo. The way that they made it seem in the other episode, when they freed Sukuna, it kind of seemed like eventually he's going to get control back, probably before the art's over. 
Type shit. Type so shit. I'm assuming that's how Sukuna gets out of here. Because realistically, with Gojo Lock, I don't see what anybody got for that nigga. No one has shit. No one has shit. And I think the real question is just what kind of terror is he about to keep going on until then? Hell yeah. And in the sake of Gojo being locked, I'm very curious. Like, let's say they were to let him out. Would he still have all of his strength? Or would nope. he be, like, fatigued from being in there? If he was, do you think that would make it a fair fight? Just because you could say Sunken us not at full power? Yes. Shit. And boy, would I love to see that, but I don't think we're getting that yet. Yeah, type shit. Type shit. And Loki, I'm going to say no, he wouldn't come out fatigued. Only just because that nigga is like, just because of how he's sitting there, like the cube, how it's on the floor just because he's chilling. It kind of makes me think that, if anything, it's more of a seal. I mean, it's a seal either way, but yeah. I don't know if it's draining his shit. I feel that, I feel that. And he kind of did take over that bitch, like, when they first put him in there. Yeah, literally, literally. But, hey, man, this episode was fire. We'd rank it, but you already said it. That's Easily JJK's best episode. Easily. At least the best episode in a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's not even to say the other episodes aren't fire, because you know what we rank them. It's all tense over here, nigga. But, which, I mean, come on now. Look what we just watched. But, hey, man. And oh, go ahead. No, nah, I was about to say, because it just came to my mind. I don't care what any JJK fan has to say to me. It's not anime of the year. If we're including One Piece, like, I'll forever be on that side. That being said, when you actually say top three, top four animes of the year, it's getting tougher and tougher not to look at JJK in the top three already when they just look at it. And I don't necessarily put that there yet if we are including One Piece because I have Bleach and Vinland. I could low-key go either way there. But at least for this season. At least for this season. Like, actually, if we're going off this season alone, I'd probably go Vinland 2 and then Bleach Thousand Year Blood War 3 for part 2. Yeah, that, yeah, that's what I would do. I, I would put Vinland 2 and then Bleach 3. That hurts to say, though. But it's, I, I think I'm good. If we were looking at Thousand Year Part 1, then it'd be the other way around. Other way around like shit. But that being said, though, JJK got to be 4 already. Oh, and for that's sure. 100%. But, yeah. but, hey, man, let us know what you think about JJK so far. Let us know what you think about that disrespectful ass whooping Mega Me took. Let us know what you think about the big bad wolf Sukuna being free at last. Yes, you know sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But hey, man, if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. You know what I'm saying? Make sure you hit that big red subscribe button as well and turn on that post notification bell so you don't miss the next episode of JJK or any of our other videos. We drop straight anime fire over here. You feel me? Make sure you guys click on our description. Two links will be waiting for you. One will take you to all of our socials, Sons of Tokyo on every platform. The other one will take you to our Discord. Come you on in. Come on in. You know what I'm saying? Come vibe out with the kids, man. But. Hey, man, with that being said, S-O-T-O.